Hi everybody, Beth here from Access Paranormal for the last I Want to Know for 2017. A big thank you to everybody who has been tuning in each and every week. I know that some people eagerly look forward to it and um, it was something that I started probably about August last year just seeing how it would go and I would if you told me that it was going to run for this long um I probably wouldn't have believed you <laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in and all for the new people as well for for jumping in um over recent times as well hi everybody <laughs> how are you going so yes this is a really um uh, some might say it's a bit of a boring topic to be honest um but it's it's necessary it's very very necessary hang on a second I'm just gonna do this for a second uh, there we go. Cool. Um, it's necessary because as investigators, we need to understand all different types of phenomena that we could possibly come across that could be quite explainable. So although it might seem like a bit of a Debbie Downer type of topic, it's actually really fascinating to know that this actually exists and how relevant it actually is to paranormal investigating. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Shane. Hi, Damo. So, yes. SBS, we're not talking about the TV station here in Australia. SBS is um, sick building syndrome and it's, it's, we'll start to go into a bit about the symptoms fairly soon. But there's also a secondary part to it as well. So once SBS starts to develop, it actually turns into what is known as BRI. I know, I know acronym city. Uh, and BRI stands for building related illnesses. So it's when it's it's gone undiagnosed and it actually starts to settle in the body. So it actually can get quite quite worse. But we'll talk about the symptoms right now, of course, as well. Um, SBS is kind of more. It's it's like your the, the stuff that starts to occur. So think about it. It's your respiratory. It's the toxins in the environment that are causing someone to become quite unwell. So it's anything that they're breathing and, and taking in. So it's your nose, your, your sort of eyes, ears. They quite, become quite um, irritated. Headaches as well. Headaches is a big thing too. Um, and and you know it starts to upset somebody as well. Um, and also I think there's a sensitivity to smell is also part of it too. So it starts to starts off that way and you think oh well it doesn't really seem like you know something possibly paranormal but when it starts to go into what is BRI it then starts to become more flu-like so it's really your body's really starting to ingest it um, you know you've got chills um, coughing um, muscle aches as well so it really kind of goes to that next level too and it, as I said it's very location based and it's about the toxins in the environment of the place that the, the person is in and it can be a new place it can be an old place it can be you know um, an office building and believe it or not office buildings it's actually more common in because you know uh, for myself in, in the years I've worked I've worked in office buildings and most of them don't have even windows you can open so keeping that in mind it often can be that too you might be investigating a location where people might be experiencing this and it actually is an office building and it has no ventilation or very little ventilation and this could also be a possible cause for that as well um the saddest thing about this though is the fact that because the symptoms can seem kind of common a lot of people actually don't go and get diagnosed for it so um it, i mean as you can imagine it sounds like the common flu or you might just be a bit run down or something like that so um, keeping that in mind that that can also it, can, it is a very highly undiagnosed uh, condition and or syndrome um, so yeah knowing it as paranormal investigators just for ourselves let alone for cases we're working on can be pretty handy so symptoms are as we know um, you know the irritation around um, your, your nose your mouth it's coughing it's, it's flu like uh, the causes for stuff like this can be are uh, uh, you know chemicals within the carpets believe it or not so it can be a new place as well so that can be um, particularly new places, uh, paint as well, paint can give off obviously highly toxic environments too, um, you know, uh, also paint pots as well, sometimes if, where they're stored, if there's not enough ventilation in a particular spot, um, that can also cause it too, uh, sometimes really bad building designs, so if you bought a cheap house or you're building a cheap house, be careful, sometimes the design can be really poorly done, and if that's the case, ventilation is not going to be great and you're more at risk of, of suffering something like this. Obviously, if you're renting, it's a little bit hard as well. Um, but, you know, I, I work in engineering and construction as well as obviously doing this at the moment. And there are data sheets, there are material data sheets where they need to provide with certain um, fluids and chemicals and materials that state how much chemical compounds are in certain uh, materials once they, they implement it into a house or a living area. So there is records of this information if it really is uh, becoming quite toxic as well. So that's something just to kind of keep in mind too. 
Um, but of course, there's not just your inside chemical stuff going on. It can actually be outside. So that could be stuff that, you know, could be coming into the house from from an air conditioning unit or, you know, anything like that, where it could be carbon monoxide or it could be um, natural gas as well. You might be have a gas leak that um, could actually be affecting somebody from a toxic level, too. Um, dust mites as well. That's another thing, too. Biochemical type stuff. You've got your mold. Oh, goodness, um, almost a staple topic for paranormal investigators is mold because of how over time it can really mess with your brain if you're actually not really careful. So it's actually really, really toxic. We look like, oh yeah, it's a grubby bathroom, you know, so what kind of stuff, but that, that mold is really bad. So keeping that in mind too, this is also part of, or possibly could be a cause of SBS as well. Now, um, how on earth does this really relate to paranormal investigating? Uh, well, with something like SBS, it's very location based. So if people aren't aware, if they're taking on a particular case and, and someone says, look, you know, I feel really ill, um, I get headaches, I'm, I'm feeling very fatigued, I'm, I'm feeling irritated, but whenever I leave the location or home, wherever, I'm feeling so much better and lighter and stuff. And it, a person who may not know this can start to lean towards, well, maybe it's paranormal because it could be location based. Maybe there's an energy there or a haunting of some sort that's affecting the person. So when they're away, they're going to feel so much better. Um, so yeah, that kind of thing, you can start to see where this starts to come into play because it's so fixated on that as well. And the symptoms too, you know, the whole fatigue side of it and stuff like that, the whole energy draining type thing as well. So keeping that in mind, this is why this is really important to know about. So you think you might have come across something like this in the past, or you might actually come across something like this in the future. What the hell do you do? Um, first thing is whether or not other people are experiencing it. Biggest thing too. So that's the first thing. Find out if other people who are also living in the house are actually also experiencing something like this as well. Second thing, get an inspection done. Now this will largely depend on the type of you know, um, location that it is. So if it's a newly built home, I'd go straight back to the builders personally myself and be having quite a harsh word or two with them. Um, also, if you know, if it's if it's a rental property, you're going to have to go through um, obviously the usual channels with that as well. Um, if it's an office building, go through the usual channels there. They'll go find the the the, the right people for it. I think um, in Australia, the EPA, which is the Environmental Protection Agency, may actually do inspections. Um, just to check, they'll have obviously have um, gadgets like we do, kind of, it's not exactly like we do, but they'll do a walkthrough, they'll have um, detection um, equipment about the environment to see what, what's around, the toxic levels, all that kind of stuff. Have a proper one done as well. Um, another thing I always, always, always highly suggest as well, if you are dealing with a private case, is to actually encourage somebody to go and see their GP or their local doctor as well, because it, it may be something else completely unrelated to the environment going on anyway, but you also just want to be able to double check that too. So again, if that's the case, that's another thing I would probably do as well. And of course, with the inspection, then if it is more than likely SBS, they will actually do a process of elimination. So they'll look around and go, okay, so we're going to take this away. We're going to move that away. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll check out the airflow as well, all that kind of stuff and see if, if they can remedy the situation as much as they possibly can. So a couple of things to keep in mind there, guys. It is a thing to uh, sort of part of your PAE list, your possible alternative explanations list to keep in mind of. And again, thank you so much, guys, for watching each and every time. I do hope um, to see you guys, but I think mid-January, I think we'll be back on again this year. So mwah, to have a wonderful, wonderful festive season and I will see you in the new year. Take care.